Okay, well, I think it's important to talk about, first of all, that CoreOS uh, is a product um, and a suite of products and projects uh, that we then unify with a set of services. And I think that holistic approach and um, our uh, application of what you might call the Unix tools philosophy um, in trying to make each of those components uh, work together uh, in a simple way along simple and very clearly defined interfaces um, are probably major technical differentiators for us. I think those add up to uh, business differentiation um, that is a stack that enables you to make decisions about where you run your uh, business workloads economically um, rather than making technical or political decisions about whether they're running in commodity cloud locations or locally in, in on-premises data centers. CoreOS was founded in 2013 um, by Alex Polvey and uh, Brandon Phillips, our two co-founders, co um, with a mission to secure the infrastructure that powers the internet. Um, what we're really at the deepest levels trying to address is uh, the, the flaws and uh, attacks that you see causing leaks of consumer information, um, financial information. We want to be part of the solution that prevents these things from happening in the future, that makes uh, this giant commerce engine we're all engaged with a, a more secure, safer place to do business, share data with each other, and protect our privacy and, and control who we share that data with uh, rather than it being you know, subject to criminals. So the, the core CoreOS mission, the absolutely essential thing we do is, is to secure the infrastructure that, that, that powers the internet. What we're seeing containers do in the enterprise is, uh, to kind of go back to that, um, drive uh, decisions about where applications are deployed along economic lines rather than technical or political lines. So we want to build systems that give common interfaces uh, to these two potential deployment targets um, and, uh, and, and enable uh, management to make decisions about where those things run um, on, like, on criteria that, that makes business sense for the organization uh, rather than for you know purely technical reasons might have formerly locked you in the data center for certain kinds of workloads. We'd like to see those workloads opened up to run on commodity hardware, uh, vice versa. Uh, we're also trying to enable a whole new security story on that on-premises data center side um, and uh, tie our software security features to real hardware validation of, of those security features. I think I may have lost your actual initial question there, but I... That's fine. I would love to try that one yeah. again. I want to make yeah. Sure that you're getting the yeah, yeah. I got a little off on that. That's all right. like, I'll repeat the question. Um, so, how are containers impacting upon enterprises? We see enterprises using containers to control the complexity of application production, development, distribution. Um, we, uh, we see enterprises using the container as a digitally, cryptographically verifiable artifact for software distribution um, throughout their uh, enterprise workloads um, and, and using the container as a, a, a much simpler artifact uh, to move between different environments uh, which allow those same organizations to um, chase better better economics or better performance metrics um, in, in different uh, data center or rollout environments. Our major challenge and the thing we go to work about we go to work thinking about every single day is uh, the, the continuing exposure of a, a, a weak security interface uh, with a lot of very important data for a very large number of people behind that interface and how do we improve the security of that interface, how do we seal that data away and how do we give businesses tools to ensure as they operate on larger and larger amounts of data that they have uh, validations, verifications, checks and balances all along their software stacks that, uh, that control wh where that data is being used, how it's being used, and, um, and uh, who can see it, who can access it.
that is the one question I saw in Kelly's thing and, uh -huh. and was like, oh my God, I hate that. How do I answer those? Those are so tough. It's a really difficult market to talk about in five year time frames because it is extremely nascent. It's brand new. We are at CoreOS and our partners, friends and competitors throughout the industry, literally writing code to explore the solution space and see what it's going to look like. I, I can comfortably say that over the next 18 to 24 months, we expect there to be a pronounced story about what you might call a hybrid deployment model. Uh, in short form, the on-premises data center is here to stay and it's not going away anytime soon. Um, and we think that's going to be an increasingly important story for the industry over the next maybe a year and a half, two years. Um, for five years, we've talked about the cloud and all these commodity cloud providers and they're absolutely fantastic for doing certain kinds of workloads, but they do not necessarily meet the expense chart analysis or the business requirements of every potential software deployment case. So there is still this story about on-premises data centers, uh, organizations maintaining their own uh, information technology infrastructure, uh, and we think that's going to be very interesting and that it plays very directly to the CoreOS stack, especially Tectonic and the Rocket Container Engine um, th that enable uh, uh, that kind of analysis. So. Key players at companies can analyze their existing software stacks um, and try to identify what requires persistent storage, uh, what pieces fit well into a stateless containerized model, um, and that can get them on the path to using containers as an artifact that can speed software deployment.